Hi, I'm Gregory Paolini, and in this episode of Table Saw Techniques, I'm going to review the fundamentals of table saw operation as demonstrated on the saw stop. So stick around. A table saw, like any other tool, is only as effective as the person operating it. And when you combine a great table saw, like a saw stop, with a skilled operator, you've got a winning combination. So today, I'm going to review the fundamentals of safe table saw operation using the saw stop. First, let's look at some basics. It's critical that you begin with a quality, well-tuned table saw. A saw stop is the safest and wisest choice. Make sure everything is adjusted to the proper specifications, as per the manufacturer's specifications. These specs can be found in your owner's manual. And always use your blade guard. If you can't use your blade guard, for example, if you're cutting a non-through cut, such as a dado, be sure to use a riving knife. This will help prevent blade binding. Be sure to use the right blade for the task. Rip blades are aggressive. They're designed for ripping with the grain of the wood. Crosscut blades are finer, designed to cut across the grain or to be used on plywood. A combination blade is good at both. Let's take a look at basic safety. Be sure you don't have any loose clothing. If you have long sleeves, you might want to roll them up out of the way. Always make sure you use personal protective equipment, safety glasses, and ear protection. And never, ever try to cut freehand on a table saw. You always need to guide and control your work somehow, either with a fence, a miter gauge, a crosscut sled, or some sort of dedicated jig or fixture that will hold and control the workpiece. All right, so let's take a look at some of the things we need to consider when we're ripping on the saw stop. And I've already got a rip blade installed in the saw, so we're all set there. It's tuned, the fence is adjusted and calibrated, so we're good there. But let's take a look at the wood. Now, this is what they would consider S3S lumber, so which basically means it's been surfaced on three sides. I've got a flat top, flat bottom face, and I have one straight edge. That one straight edge is critical when you're ripping on the table saw. This other edge that's still all wavy, that doesn't matter because we're gonna cut that off. But we're actually gonna guide this piece along this straight edge. So it's really important that we have at least one straight edge on that board. All right, so next, you'll want to adjust the blade height. And it should be adjusted so that the gullets of the blade are just clearing the workpiece. Now, look how I position my body. Instead of standing straight at the saw, I actually turn my body to about a 90 degree angle to the saw. The reason for that is, if I'm making a rip cut, and all of a sudden I do end up getting some kickback, the board is going to go right past me. If I'm standing right behind the board, it's going to go into me, I'm going to have a bad day. I use my left hand to keep the board on the deck of the table saw, and also up against the fence. That's all my left hand does. I plant it on the table, it never ever moves. My right hand just pushes the board, that's it. I want to make sure that I don't exert any downward pressure, which would lift up the front of the board, and I don't want to lift. I just want to maintain the height of that board. My, my only motion here should be straightforward to push the board past the blade just like that. When the board is fully supported on the table saw, I can grab the push stick, follow right through. I don't want to push down on the board when it's still out here. There's nothing underneath there to support it. Again, when I have solid support, then I can get the push stick on there and follow through. Notice again that my left hand is controlling the workpiece. It's not moving at all. My right hand is propelling the workpiece. 
Both hands have specific operations that they have to undertake. And that's a basic rip cut. Now let's look at cross cutting this to length. So to cross cut these pieces to length, I'm going to use the miter gauge. This is the stock miter gauge that comes with the saw stop. And I've just added an extra piece of wood on the front of it. This provides a little extra length and stability. It's absolutely fine to do that. And I've got the cross cut blade installed in the saw. And I'm going to raise it so that it, again, the gullets just clear the workpiece. That's all the height I need. Now one of the most important rules when you're cross cutting is you never want to use the miter gauge in conjunction with the fence. Here's why. If you do, what happens is you've got a point of contact and support here and a point of contact and support here, both operating in different directions. And what could happen is the workpiece, once it's cut, could get trapped in between the spinning blade and the fence, creating a dangerous kickback situation. So we never want to use the fence in conjunction with the miter gauge. If you need consistent length cuts, you don't use the fence, use a stop block. And this one may look archaic, but it's very safe and it's very consistent. Now to make this cut, I'm simply going to have my board against my stop block and against my miter fence. I'll grab the miter gauge here and I'm going to just pinch the workpiece up against the fence. And I could do this cut with the blade guard on, except I want you to see the stop block, the miter fence, so I'm removing it strictly for clarity, just so that you can see everything that I'm doing here. I'm holding the workpiece firmly against the miter fence. I push forward and I pull straight back. I don't try to remove the workpiece until the miter gauge is fully retracted. If I did, the workpiece could get caught in between the stop lock and the blade and it could kick back. So I've got two pieces exactly the same length due to my archaic stop block. And that's fundamental ripping and cross cutting on a saw stop table saw. Be sure to join me again for another episode of Table Saw Techniques.